I am Devraj Goyal, Professor Educational Technology from CIET and CRT New Delhi, India. Today we will focus on research scenario of teacher education in India. It is under the course Perspectives, Issues and Research in Teacher Education. Let us delineate the objectives. After going through this module, the learners will be able to understand the research scenario in teacher education, list the issues related to research and development, work out the possible solutions of the identified issues, and enshade the criteria for assessment of teacher education institutions and work out the research agenda. Introduction. Research and development go together. Research leads to development and development to research. Now we will focus on the research scenario of teacher education in India. The present module attempts to present the research scenario of teacher education cutting across various facets as follows. Let's focus on art education. There are rare studies on art education. One study reviewed under the section art education is on developing art education curriculum for secondary level. The study reveals that problems are existing in the education system regarding infrastructure facilities, curriculum and its transaction. Struggle for naturalism is identified as one of the psychological needs of the adolescent group. The secondary students need not only qualified faculty to teach the subject but also facilities and opportunities to practice. Students were found to have developed a positive attitude towards the art education curriculum developed by the investigator Parmeshwaran O.P. 2001 MSU. Deepak John Matthew 2005 MSU conducted a study of the development and effectiveness of instructional strategy on color and form for design education. This is an exploratory study which proved to be beneficial to both students and the design teachers alike. Now, special education. Studies on the mentally retarded. M. Bharati, Punjab University 1993, studied the psychosocial problems of the mentally retarded and the role of self-help groups. G. F. Deshti, 1995, conducted a study on the relative effectiveness of training techniques to bring out behavioral changes amongst mentally retarded. Rajam Pile, University of Kerala 1995 studied the effect of individualized training program on communication skills and certain associated variables in the mentally retarded. M.P. Anitha, University of Kerala 1996 conducted a study of the dimensions of teacher effectiveness of the mentally retarded. R. Lal, SNDT 1999 conducted an experimental study on inclusion of ACK system in the curriculum of teacher training in special education and its effect on language development of children with mental retardation. M. Mann, KUK 2000, developed an educational package for the mentally retarded children. M. Sharma, MSU 2004, developed and tried out an intervention program for parents of children with mental retardation. R. Pandit, MSU 2008, conducted a study on effectiveness of behavior modification techniques in children with mental retardation. R. Sina, University of Lucknow, 1993, conducted a study on the education for the rehabilitation of spastics, identification of potential learners and dropouts amongst cerebral palsy spastics children, an effort for achievement of human potentialities. Then studies on learning difficulties. L. Chaudhary, Punjab University 1996 conducted a study to assess the prevalence of learning difficulties amongst high-risk early school children. H. Tahilani, Jamia Milia Islamia 1998 studied the effectiveness of remedial reading program for the learning disabled and normal children. A. Khanna, Punjab University 1999 studied the effect of multi-sensory instructional and playway approaches towards the remediation of spellings in science of the elementary learning disabled children in relation to their anxiety, self-concept and locus of control. I.B. Chuktai, Bhaktullah University 2000 conducted a diagnostic study of learning 
disabled children in language at primary stage and try out of the remedial measures. SR Reddy, Osmania University 2001, conducted training and rehabilitation service for the persons with disabilities in Andhra Pradesh. Puja, KUK 2004, studied the arithmetic error profile of learning disabled children for improving their arithmetic skills. S. Devi, Punjab University 2004, studied the effectiveness of differential remedial measures to improve spellings of fourth graders with learning disabilities. M. R. Uma Devi, Kevampu University 1997, studied the effectiveness of a remedial program on improving reading comprehension skills among dyslexia children. D. Chauhan, Punjab University 2004, studied the effectiveness of different strategies for remediating dyscalculia in primary school children, studies on visually handicapped. R. J. Vyas, Saurashtra University 1995, conducted a study of certain personality traits of blind students as compared to sighted students. Neelam, KUK 1997, conducted a study of creative potential of visually impaired students in relation to their self-concept and locus of control. R. C. Mulwani, Gujarat Vidyapit 1999, constructed and standardized a verbal group test of intelligence for the blinds of Gujarat state for the age group 12 and above. Y. Chandra Mohan, Osmania University 2001, studied in problems and needs of visually impaired students at secondary level in AP. V. Bharati, DABV Indore 2001, conducted a comparative study of the food habits and appetite in relation to nutritional status of the normal and visually handicapped children aged 8 to 12 years of Indore district. Now studies on hearing impaired. S. Shivji, MSU 1995 has done critical appraisal of structural and functional aspects of organizations for hearing impaired in Gujarat. B. B. Pandit, Bhavnagar University 1996 developed a basic vocabulary in Gujarati language for hearing impaired children and studies on physically handicapped. N. Satsangi, Punjab University 1993, conducted a study of adjustment, self-concept, alienation, and altruism in siblings of handicapped and normal children. L. Gurnani, MLS University 1993, conducted a study of life values, personality, and creativity of physically handicapped senior high secondary students of Rajasthan. S. Kamathan, Jivaji University 2002, conducted a comparative study of personality dimensions of normal and handicapped polio-affected children. Now studies on autism, deaf and dumb. C. A. Reddy, Jivaji University 1993, studied the effect of physical education program on motor behavior and selected coordinative abilities of deaf and dumb students. V. Hema Nalini, Avinasha Lingam University 2005, developed psychosocial pedagogic intervention strategies for autism, then studies on other special groups. H. S. Shishodhya, Agra University 1993, conducted an analysis of the psychosocial aspects of neurotic behavior in children. S. Kumari Huda, MDU 1993, conducted a study of special groups of students in classroom. R. Goenka, Guru Nanak Dev University 1993, conducted a comparative study of personality and intrafamilial relations of delinquents and non-delinquents belonging to different socio-economic groups. M. Seth, Lucknow University 1994, conducted a study of cognitive development in socially disadvantaged children, orphans. S. Acharya, Brahampur University 1995, studied the personality, motivational and cognitive competencies of invulnerable children. R. Mehta, MSU 1996, conducted an experimental study to analyze the differential impact of therapeutic intervention strategies on some disruptive behavior disorders. V. D. Bindal, Jivaji University 1998, conducted a study of relationship between familial background and postural defects in primary school boys. M. K. George, Pune University 1998, conducted an inquiry into extent and causation factors of educational backwardness among the marine fish workers of Kerala.
Jasbir Kaur Virk, MDU 1999, conducted a study of motivational areas of special groups of students at different levels of SCS and intelligence. P. M. Thomas, University of Mumbai, 2002, conducted a study of the influence of the teacher's presence in Don Bosco system of education on the development of the personality of students as compared to other educational institutions. R. Bobby, SNDT, 2002, studied the effect of music therapy on the behavioral responses of children with attention deficit hyperactive disorder. R. Ruhela, MJP Rohilkhand University, 2003, conducted a comparative study of impulsivity, locus of control, and adjustment of slow learners and normal children. A. Varshane, University of Lucknow, 2004, studied the cognitive performance and affective disposition of school children with nutritional anemia. Now, studies on inclusive education. A. V. Jagdap, Pune University 1996 conducted a study of integration of the disabled children in mainstream schools of Maharashtra. S. Sudarshan, Bhartihar University 1999 conducted a study of issues and challenges encountered by the resource teachers, regular teachers, school administrators, visually disabled children and non-disabled children in teaching learning situations in integrated education program. Special education is a very challenging task. It demands full identification with the children. Even software such as JAWS, Job Access with Speech, are not readily available for the visually handicapped. Compatible kits are not available with the hearing impaired and organically challenged. Designing behavior modification techniques for the mentally retarded is a highly skillful task. Even more challenging is to treat them. Children with learning disabilities, learning difficulties, visual handicap, hearing impairment, physical handicap, cerebral palsy, anemia, autism all need special care and treatment. Inclusive education demands highly caring institutions, competent staff, and congenial conditions. Teacher education should make suitable provisions for all these special children. Now let us focus on educational management and administration. About 3.5% of the GNP in India is spent on education. The distribution also varies from pre-primary level to tertiary level. Research obtains the least share which is less than 1% of the GNP. A large number of teacher education institutions are still being governed by traditional conservative bureaucratic model rather than by human relations model. Mostly in the private sector, the focus of the teacher education trusts is most on finance and market and least on the growth and development of human beings. Even by the public sector, there is abrupt cut on the teaching faculty. Under the ages of, public, under the ages of being public, the state supported universities and colleges continue to have their inflexibility and insensitivity. There are imbalances in learner-learning resources ratio, which management theory proposes fully qualified teacher educators as Siksha Sahayak, Sikshak, Sikshak. Where does the public exchequer flow if not for education? There are problems of management of admissions in various programs. Time, space, personal management, learning resources management, management of examinations, placement and promotion. There are problems of organizational behavior and organizational development. There is a wide scope for developing healthy organizational climate, post-conventional autonomous creative leaders and administrators are rarely ap appearing. Total quality management is a myth and figment of imagination. There are problems of teacher, rust out and teacher burnout. Unless we put in concerted efforts to produce a cadre of educational administrators and managers, the nation will keep witnessing the judicial activism, subsuming the roles of the executive, overaction of the social activists and displeasure of the state. We need Indian Education Service, IES cadre persons to guide Indian education and teacher education. Now let us focus on taxonomy of educational skills. Ultimate aim of education anywhere should be to develop a complete human being. For that, skills need to be developed in all the domains to live happy, productive and peaceful life. 
hard skills are the core skills which are required for innovation, creation, construction and production in various disciplines such as physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, engineering and technology, art, commerce. The various phases are sensitivity, germination, incubation, innovation, creation, construction, development and implementation. Whether it is designing, production and flying of an aeroplane or sensing, creating, composing and reciting a poem or formulating, producing, analyzing and injecting a drug or designing, developing, organizing and administering of an institution, soft skills are needed for everyday transaction. These are required for how people relate to each other, communicating, engaging a dialogue, giving feedback, cooperating as a team member, contributing in meeting and resolving conflicts, setting an example, team building, facilitating meetings, encouraging innovations, solving problems, making decisions, planning, delegating, observing, instructing, coaching, encouraging and motivating. To be good at hard skills usually takes smarts or IQ also known as our left brain, the logical center. To be good at soft skills usually takes emotional intelligence or EQ also known as our right brain, the emotional center. Hard skills are skills where the rules stay the same regardless of which company, circumstances or people you work with. In contrast, soft skills are self-management skills and people skills where the rules change depending upon the company, culture and people you work with. For example, programming is a hard skill. The rule for how we can do good at creating the best code to do a function is the same regardless of where we work. Communication skills are a set of soft skills. The rules for how to be effective at communication change and depend upon the audience and the content we are communicating. Hard skills can be learned in school. There are usually designated levels of competency and a defined path as to how to excel with each hard skill. Most soft skills are not taught well in school and have to be learned on the job by trial and error. Careers can be classified into three categories. Careers that need hard skills and little soft skills, both hard and soft skills, mostly soft skills and little hard skills. But hard skills and soft skills combination is rarely found. There is less research but more publication, less creation but more communication, less production but more marketing and vice versa. Masses are lost in customary designs. Hard skills which emerge through sound theoretical base or lead to theory with practice, patience and perseverance, having precision and perfection, passionately emerge. Soft skills demand environmental sensitivity and action communication, transaction and transmission through the soft skills infuse life into this sphere. Here the intent is to arrive at a combination of hard skills and soft skills. Hard and soft skills are often referred to when entering into and living a profession. While hard skills are essential to enter, it is the soft skills that facilitate professional ethics and aesthetics. To be a good personality fit for any profession we need to be quality producers, humanistic communicators, and civilized and scientific consumers. The scholars who philosophizes at doctoral level in various disciplines ought to immerse themselves in their realm fully. Education scholars, by virtue of their discipline, have to be holistic. It is evident from the ideographs that some scholars are higher on information and media skills info service skills, techno pedagogic skills, but lower on yoga skills and techno management skills. Some scholars who are higher on self direction skill and social responsibility skills are lower on techno living skills. The scholars who have been found highest overall and on adaptability and accountability skill, communication skill, information and media skill, problem solving skill, self direction skill, social responsibility skill, human relation skill, emotional skill, life skill, adjustment skill, human development, climate skill, research and construct skill and citizenship skill has been found relatively low on holistic education skill, yoga skill, techno special skill and techno living skill and in, in between on critical thinking and systems thinking and life skills. It is desirable 
that all the scholars have all the educational skills at the optimum level. As a whole, the skill scenario of the scholars has been found to be promising, but there is always scope for perfection. We should be in a position to employ any skill, timely, easily, precisely, and joyfully. But how to realize this vision? The complexities of the living conditions demand skillful persons in various dimensions of life. All the skills have their significance. Infosavy and digital skills are as important as spiritual intelligence and yoga skills. Self-awareness skills are as important as systems thinking skills. Production skills are as important as consumption skills. Zooming out is as important as zooming in. Personal skills are as significant as citizenship skills. General as well as special skills have their own value. Research is as important as construction. Downloading is as important as uploading. How can life be a network of arrays of innumerable skills where ideas spring, feelings flow, motor creates, spirit reigns, and the self resonates with the sphere in this digital age? Dancing crops, flowing wisdom, enchanting music, touching songs, resonating dance, immersing verses, speaking sculptures, enlightened learners, innovative researchers, skillful scholars, and creative constructors are the wonderful springs of nature. Now, research methodology in education. There are more of quantitative studies than qualitative. The studies are scattered and unlinked. There is lack of continuity, cumulativeness, and synthesis. Most of the studies are descriptive rather than preventive and ameliorative. Culture for incubation of ideas is grossly lacking, but to talk of inculcation, but to talk of inculcation, statistics and psychometrics are superimposing reality. There is a mixed scenario of research in education. Some of the observations are as follows. A large number of surveys have been conducted in education, but the principles of objectivity, transparency, equivalence, and generality have not been adequately observed. In experimental research, largely the scholars move from induction to abduction, to thesis, to analogy, to facts, to theories. But inconsistent, scattered researches lead us nowhere. Social laboratory is a myth and figment of imagination. It has become essential to sustain social life that the social scientists evolve their own methods. In case study research, diagnosis of a case is as important as prognosis of its disposition. A large majority of us have become excellent in describing the problems and cases, but prognosis is lacking. Here, the precess, process, and product variables all need to be treated very carefully. Now, naturalistic inquiry, which phenomenology demands, needs to be conducted in an open, naturalistic, parametric setting. Because more and more are the controls in a social science laboratory, lesser and lesser is the generalizability. Qualitative research cannot be conducted through a priori samples only. Sampling goes on throughout research, throughout various sampling techniques such as typical case sampling, intensity sampling, critical case sampling, sensitive case sampling, convenience sampling, primary selection, and secondary selection. Qualitative research cannot be conducted through static tools and techniques because very often the researcher employing qualitative research methodology does not have a sound theoretical base related to the reality. Theory, in fact, is the product of inquiry. Qualitative research is affected by a wonderful interaction of subject and object. The object needs to be perceived as objectively and comprehensively as feasible. One of the basic tenets of qualitative research is awareness of one's own biases. There is a need to address diversity issues such as gender, race, religion, ability, sexual orientation, and socio-economic status. The pursuit of knowledge should be conducted with sincerity and care. Critical theory takes as a central concern the issue of power in the knowledge context. It focuses on how and in whose interest knowledge is produced and passed on. Where are the funds floated? What is the interest? What is the return on investment? Let us try to conclude. Education in India at all levels is full of problems. There are innumerable challenges such as assimilating the globalization, 
managing knowledge, continuous updating of knowledge and skills, creating new age institutions, balancing materialism and values of orient, phantom use of resources, transplanet technology stabilization, working with multiple languages and multiple cultures, meeting the climatic and environmental challenges, sustaining development, collaborative living, holistic development, developing vocational skills, enhancing communication skills, quality control, removing public-private dichotomy, controlling rising materialistic values, realizing even distribution, controlling ecological imbalances, fair recognition, valid accreditation, sustaining symbiosis, respecting cultural heritage, sustaining sensitivity to the basic values, convergence of state society, education and judiciary, respecting rights of all and transcending time, space and mind. The research focus needs to be decided very carefully. The educational research in India is quite substantive, but the present day researcher is lost in the mechanics of research restricting degrees of freedom and flexibility. The research agenda is almost absent. The research priorities are arbitrarily decided, but the present day chaos in educational research will no longer exist. Indian education is strong enough to sustain and strengthen its identity. Thank you.